All right, Isaiah and Jesus. Here we go. Here's the scroll that, that was found in the Dead Sea in the cave of, of Qumran, and it was like a complete scroll. In fact, I think it was the only one that was absolutely complete, and it was the book or the scroll of Isaiah. Isn't that amazing, you guys? It was so preserved. So Isaiah lived and prophesied about 700 BC, right? Or BCE, whichever we want to call it. Here's a timeline to show. So in the beginning, God. In the end, God. In the beginning, there was creation with Adam and Eve. Then we had Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, David, Elijah. And now we have Isaiah around 700 BC. Here's a close up on the whole BC time, which means before Christ, or now it's before common era because our, our globalists today want to wipe out Christianity. So here we have Isaiah right around 700 before Christ. Really cool stuff. All right. So let's check this out. So read Isaiah 53 to your Jewish friend and watch what happens, you guys. Something powerful happens. Why? Well, a lot of people will read Isaiah 53 without showing them where they're at in the Bible. And they'll say, what do you think of that to their Jewish friends? And they say, well, why are you reading the New Testament to me? And they're like, no, that's not the New Testament. That's the prophet Isaiah, your prophet. Look, it's in the Tanakh, right? The, the Jewish Old Testament. And they'll show them where it's at. And you know what happens a lot of times? They believe. They become believers in Jesus Christ. It's an amazing thing, you guys. So try that sometime. Read, read Isaiah 53 to your Jewish friends. So why are you reading the New Testament, they say, right? That's what happens. So Isaiah 53 was called the uh, considered the forbidden chapter by many of the synagogues because it caused a lot of confusion and arguments and different things like that. So they started to skip it. Some of them did anyway. But these are all the prophecies of Jesus. So I see you could see Isaiah 7, 9. I know it's out of order there, but 11, 28, 29, 40, 42, 53. That's the big one, right? Even 52, the beginning or the end of 52 is actually the prophecy. Remember, these chapters were put in by men later. It, you know, it wasn't the original to have these chapters. This was done by men. It helps you find things, right? Isaiah 55, and then Isaiah 61. This is a special one we're going to get to at the end of this episode. You don't want to miss it because what it does, this is the Isaiah 61 was the, 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 the scroll was unrolled. Jesus was in this hometown synagogue of Nazareth. He read Isaiah 61 and he stopped mid sentence, mid verse, at a comma, right? And he said, today these scriptures are fulfilled. But what does the rest of it say? Stay tuned. You're going to see it. It's amazing. And it speaks of his second coming and protecting Israel. It's amazing, amazing stuff, guys. All right. So let's continue on here. So Jesus's birth, Isaiah chapters seven and nine. That's where you can find that. And we're going to go into each one of these in more detail. This is just an overview. This video is an overview. We're going to have part one, part two, part three, part four, in and more in Isaiah. So stay tuned, guys. This is so fun, right? All right. Let's continue on here. So here we see uh, Jesus' birth. Then we see the second coming, like I was just talking about, Isaiah 61, when he came in to his hometown of Nazareth, and he read it, and he said, today these scriptures are fulfilled. So let's read it. Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord anointed me to bring good news to the humble. Some translations say the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Right there, Jesus stopped, okay, at that comma, mid-verse, mid-sentence. He rolled up the scroll of Isaiah, handed it back to the attendant, walked over and sat down in his hometown synagogue. And then he said, today in your hearing, these scriptures have been fulfilled. And they were like, what? That only the Messiah can fulfill that. Right, <laughs> right. But there's more to Isaiah 61 and it speaks of his second coming to protect Zion. Let's check it out, you guys. So let's get right back into this scroll, this amazing scroll of Isaiah. And here we are. So what does the rest of that verse say? Here we go. And the day of vengeance of our God. Whoa, vengeance. To comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion 
giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. And this is the part I really love right here. The cloak of praise instead of a disheartened spirit. A cloak, right? Clothed in praise, clothed in Jesus' righteousness. That's what that means, you guys. And it's beautiful. <laughs> I love that, don't you? The book of Isaiah. Amazing. You guys, we're getting into this. I can't wait to go into more detail. We're going to start in Isaiah chapter 7 and then 9, and we're going to continue on, and we're going to be looking at all of the different places where you can find Jesus in the Old Testament. But if you want to see more right now, click on this playlist. You could see Jesus and Joseph's story. You could go way back, see him in the very first word of the Bible in Genesis. But in Abraham and Isaac going up the mountain, in Joseph's story, in Moses' story, Story, many, many other places we've already looked at, and you can go back and watch us. So click on this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament.